Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Fail Fast Podcast. I am Quinn Amorm, and today with us, we have one of the most infamous marketers in the world, known for his cutting-edge growth hacks and his genius business ideas. He's been featured in publications like Fortune, BuzzFeed, The Daily Telegraph, The New Statement, Wired, Vice, Inc., and many more. I can't, the list goes on. He founded a couple online magazines, Planet Ivy and Screen Robot, which received nearly 20 million page views with zero marketing spend in the first two years. This is the man who raised over $100,000 in pre-orders of his growth hacking book, Vin Clancy. What's happening, Vin? Hello, I am Vin. Good to hear from you. Let's do the best podcast of all time. Let's do it. So uh, we all know that Vin Clancy is known for growth hacking. Uh, why don't you, before we get into this, explain what that is. What is growth hacking? So growth hacking is nothing to do with like hacking computers. It is uh, hacking growth. So like a shortcut for growth. So if you had something in your bathroom that you didn't want the plumber to fix and you put sellotape on it and it does the job, that's a hack. So I find hacks that work in order to grow your business and I tell the world about them. There are hacks to get more traffic to your website, to close more sales leads, to grow your Instagram followers. So I detail how to do all of that and then teach the world about it. So by, by the term, a lot of people think that hacks is something, something temporarily. And is that really the way it is? Is it just temporary? Some, some, some are timeless and they will last forever, such as if you refer a friend, both of you, uh, we give both of you a little bit of money or free credits. That's what a hack will work forever. Uh, but some are temporary. And that's a good point. And, and that's why it's so important that you start on these hacks as soon as possible. So you're building your customer list, you're building your email list, uh, through all of these little hacks, they may get taken away. The social media channels may uh, shut the hacks down, but that's why it's so important to build that competitive advantage with whatever you're doing. Very good. And talking about growth hacking, you you grew a Facebook group through using those techniques, and you reached five figures of uh, users, not not money, but five figures in no time at all. And I actually have it up here and uh, traffic and copy yeah uh you use those same techniques to grow your group is that right yeah absolutely so we had three thousand members in the group within i don't know three weeks or something so we were inviting people in we're inviting people by email we had share competitions where people shared it and invited their friends in they won certain things so I guess what was really key with that is we got in quite early with that. So it was like mid-2016 we started that. Um, so um, I, I believe this is the last year you'll be able to grow a Facebook group. I think next year it's just going to get too difficult to start from scratch and to get a lot of visibility on it. So yeah, so th uh, that uh, ended up making me six figures within the first six months. So um, yeah, it was one of the best like business decisions I ever made. So uh, to, to get revenue from a Facebook group, for those that don't know, uh, where does this revenue come from? So, um, so you can sell to your group. So if people want to hire you, uh, they see you as an authority. You can create info products uh, and sell those. You can sell coaching packages and you can put on live events. Um, lots of software as a service company as ha also have groups just to get them users uh, and to create a sense of community outside of their app. So you can really do anything with it. I mean, the golden rule in business and in life is if you have the attention of people, you can make money from it. You know, that's why rock bands get signed when they have a lot of people watching them, but they have nothing else. But the idea is if they can get a lot of attention, then we'll be able to sell something to them eventually. Exactly. And so what are, uh, right now at the time of this recording, this is 2018, what are some of the uh, best growth hacks that you can share with us? So, um, so, so some of the best growth hacks that I've seen work the most powerfully right now 
um, is still cold email. Um, so particularly if you're based in the United States, you can use something like find that lead to find as many people's email addresses basically from anywhere on the internet. Uh, Rebump is a tool that will help with your sales follow-ups. Uh, so it's a Gmail tool. If you email someone and they do not get back to you, Rebump will email them every 24 hours forever. Um, another growth hack um, I've seen work really well uh, is Fame Pocket. So Fame Pocket is an Instagram shout outs group. Mm -hmm. So you can get lots of likes and comments on your Instagram post when it goes live. Um, and through this, it shows up in the algorithm a lot more and a lot more people see it. Um, so those are three that tend to work really well, regardless of what niche you're in. But there's really hundreds. And, and that's what my last book, Ace the Game, uh, the 100 best growth hacks in the world was about. Um, there's a ton of different things you can do. It's just about trying them and finding the ones that are right for you. So now you mentioned the, uh, your book, Ace the Game, which is fantastic. Is that the one that got $100,000 just in pre-orders of the book? That was the one before it, Secret Source, uh, Step-by-Step Guide to Growth Hacking. So that, that's done nearly 200000 in total. Uh, my second book did $10,000 of sales in the first hour. Um, <laughs> it's still scaling as I speak right now. So, um, yeah, so I, and a lot of that is just based off uh, activating my own community. Um, so we try other things like PR, podcasts, affiliates, and Facebook ads. Uh, but I, I've really found most sales come from having a community, having a fan base, having people who care about what you have to say. And Vin, you don't have a book publisher. So you, you published it yourself, self-published book. Yeah. So how did you get, I guess, all this, uh, like I said, the $10,000 in the first hour? That was also growth hacking. Yeah, yeah, 100%. So uh, if, if the question is, why didn't you have a book, book publisher? Well, when you're publishing a book, it's either for money or for fame. So if it's for fame, you do a book publisher, you only keep 10% of the money, they keep the other 90%. But in theory, if it goes well and hits the New York Times bestsellers list, you, you, know, you, you build your brand. Uh, but uh, I was all about money. So for the first book, uh, well, for both books, how we launched it is we did a viral queue. So that is we sent all of our email list and our social media followers to a landing page, uh, which said, uh, this is the pre-launch queue for the book. Give us your email, sign in. And then if you share this with your friends, if you like us on Facebook, if you follow us on Twitter, you get points. Whoever gets the most points wins the competition. Oh, this, is, this is fantastic. I was just, you were speaking and I was just thinking to myself, I should be writing this down, but uh, I'm actually, I'm recording so I can, <laughs> I'll hear it again. This is fantastic, Vin. Yeah, so, uh, so we did that um, and then, so that had, both times that had thousands of people uh, waiting for it on the day it launched. Um, so, so then we, we have a lot of hype leading up to it. Um, mm -hmm. And then we had on launch day, we did a webinar. Um, so we follow Russell Brunson's perfect webinar formula. Um, just look, look it up. It, it's a certain way of doing a webinar. Um, and we launched to our community using Jeff Walker's product launch formula, which is five posts. Number one, hey we're thinking of launching this who would be interested uh, and people are like yeah yeah i'm interested secondly why you're launching it thirdly what it is uh, that you'll be launching um fourthly uh how they can buy it and then the fifth is okay it's live now um and then it's it, it it launches live on the webinar so you give a lot of value in the webinar so people are like he knows what he's talking about uh and then you launch the webinar and boom you get ten thousand dollars Wow. Yeah, pretty good. And so now this is like, you know, this is the fail fast podcast and we haven't touched about your failures and we all know how successful you are, but it hasn't always been like that. You have been pretty much homeless and you were, uh, you were pretty much what we call here in Canada, uh, being on pogey. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that right? Yeah, so, um, so if we cycle back to 2011, um, I just moved out of my parents and I got made redundant from my dead end job. Um, and uh, so then I signed on for social welfare, which is they paid your rent. At that time, my rent was um, 
I think it was 200 pounds a month because I was living in a bad part of uh, town in London, in South London, uh, where the riots happened. Literally, the riots were happening where I lived in 2011 with uh, water dripping from my roof because, you know, the, the house was just finished. Um, and then uh, I... So I was a guardian, which means you guard someone's property from squatters breaking in and you get massively reduced rent. So I was on that. Then that one ended after a, a mafia threatened me, but that's a whole other story. Uh, so, so I was homeless. And then luckily I had a girlfriend and I stayed with her for a few weeks until I got my next place. My next place uh, was another guardianship scheme and uh, they... So we moved in and very, very cold in England in the, in the winter, like similar to Canada. Uh, and our heating broke the first week we were there in February. Uh, and then I called up the landlord and said, we have no heating. And he said, well, it doesn't matter because the building's about to be demolished. <laughs> <It's> high up. <laughs> so, uh, so then so we had to buy the electric heaters that plug into the wall. If you ever had those, you know that they eat energy to heat the, uh, the apartment. Um, even though it was like a tiny 300 square foot apartment. That wouldn't have been so bad, but they didn't trust us to pay the electricity because we were so poor. So there was a meter in our house and you had to run to the convenience store and charge it up with electricity uh, and then bring it back and tag into your wall. And, and that's how we had electricity. And th those things are very inefficient anyway. So yeah, so we'd be cooking. We didn't have any gas in the apartment either. So we're cooking on an electric cooker and the heating dies and then that's it. There's like the food stops cooking. So that happened a lot. So we had to go down. So I, I would carry my change jar of pennies down to uh, put like 13, seven pounds once I remember putting on uh, on electricity because that's all I had to put electricity in my house. So that's when I started Planet Ivy. Um, that, that was the point when I started my first company uh, and it was just pure hustle. I had, an, I had a dream where I would create something where the writers would be stars, not musicians. And uh, I called up every university in the country and saying, you should write for my magazine. You'll get editorial feedback and it's a, a good platform for you. Uh, and second week, we had 25,000 visitors. After six months, we had 300,000 visitors a month. And around that time, we, uh, we gave a talk uh, in Google Campus in London. Someone who had just left Facebook saw us, introduced us to free investors, uh, and two of, us, two of them gave us a quarter million dollars. And uh, I was literally off welfare from one day to the next. I was out of debt, plus positive, uh, literally overnight. Yes, from negative to plus a quarter million, just yeah. like, like that. And this Planet Ivy, did you did you code it? You designed it yourself, or was this a script? I, I had a co-founder who coded that with me, like a seventeen-year-old kid. We we just met through hanging out in East London. Um, yeah, it was just by the grace of God we happened to meet. He could design websites, uh, and uh, he yeah he he very much helped a lot. Um, a kid called Lewis and uh, yeah he really helped me get it off the ground uh, and introduced me to things like Reddit which would eventually drive us a lot of traffic um, yeah so it, it's been a crazy journey um, but yeah that, that that's how it all started and then uh, I and then that got to two million visitors a month the magazine company uh, and then um, and then we couldn't scale it anymore so that one went and I had to fire my staff and I had to start all over again uh, in a consultancy agency. Um, and that's for the most part what I've been doing now, just doing different things, like a hundred day world tour speaking around the world to support my agency and grow my personal brand. And then that eventually led to me moving out to the United States full time. Yeah, so uh, talking about moving to the States full time, there's something, uh, something really fantastic is, I heard that you have the exact same visa to stay in the states that justin bieber has and it's for extraordinary skills yeah. so uh tell me you don't sing part-time <laughs> uh, i'd like to learn next year but um no it's just like it's it's any extraordinary ability uh which is kind of tied to fame a little bit so by that, um, I, you know, I'd spe I'd spoke all over the world. I had some early press in places like Inc. Um, so, yeah, so it was just like, he's a little bit famous. Uh, he has an extraordinary ability, uh, speaking, writing, business. Um, yeah, so, and yeah, so I, I, I got that visa. I think less than 10,000 people a year get that visa, and I was one of them. Yeah, no, that's incredible. And about, uh, you mentioned how you were an Inc., I also saw that you were at Fortune, BuzzFeed, Daily Telegraph, New Statement, 
Wired, all of those. How does that work? Do they contact you? Do you contact them? Do you have an agent now or how does it work? It, it's a good question. It's something I'm about to write an article about. Like uh, I see people, there's a, there's a big market for selling these um, contributor posts in like Huffington Post, Inc. and so on where you pay someone just to get featured and then you kind of use that as a social proof to get clients. It doesn't really help. Like it, it, it's like all of my press apart from uh, Vice and Wired um, just came as a natural uh, to me doing my journey. Uh, like I'm doing press right now. It doesn't make a difference to anything. If you, if you have like a truly unique product, like ideally a tech product or a physical product, that's really good for press. But for the most point, if you're like a consultant, I mean, it's kind of what I am. Like I, I build this crazy personal brand so that I can stand out versus all the other boring people in like suits and so on. Um, but like, there's, there's not really much you can do. If you're in business and selling B2B, like client stuff, it's just not that exciting. So like uh, what you really need to build is being great at what you do and getting referrals and doing sales. So like these logos, yeah. So other than um, the Harambe event, really. So, um, so Vice and Wired, uh, I was obsessed with this Harambe the gorilla who got shot dead in Cincinnati Zoo. Do you remember this? I remember that, yes. Yeah, so I wanted to put on the world's biggest Harambe tribute event in London. Uh, so we did a Kickstarter, uh, and then that was the only one we manually reached out to press. Uh, and that's how we got those. Wired thought we were exploiting the death of the gorilla. They were very unhappy. Uh, but Vice Magazine loved it and interviewed me. Um, and that's, that's the only time we've actively chased press because we figured this is such a mainstream event that getting that featured uh, would be good. And, and it did. You know, we, we made like $5,000 from the Kickstarter. We got to hire a man in a gorilla suit, put him in a coffin, and then jumped out of the coffin in the talk, and we did a synchronized dance. That was pretty good. <laughs> Oh, that's that's fantastic. Um, what did I? I wanted to ask you something about what you mentioned there. Oh, so uh, an entrepreneur. Sarah, there's several entrepreneurs, of course, uh, that are uh, our audience is made of entrepreneurs. If they want to get into growth hacking, yeah, how can they start generating income from growth hacking? So, um, so growth hacking can be used for anything, whether you want to be Instagram famous, whether you want to grow your startup, whether you want to grow your business. Um, so I would just go a level above that. So what growth hacking will do is it will get you traffic to whatever your idea is. You want to be the biggest podcaster in the world. Uh, you want to become a coach or consultant. You want your startup to get oxygen. So it, you know, so it lives. Um, so, so that's really what growth hacking is. It, it's the layer above it. Um, so I, I mean, to give you a more specific example, uh, who are the types of people who listen to this podcast? Well, it's, uh, the, the majority would be the millennial entrepreneur, mm -hmm. uh, Same. and, uh, also out of their majority of those are in startup stages. Sure. So if you're a millennial entrepreneur, uh, you're probably well, it's likely you're, you're going to be going down the coach consultant route. Uh, and the number one place you need to do that is via building a Facebook group. So what you'd want to be doing is coming up with a unique name that people can search on Facebook, uh, then getting as many people in that group as fast as possible, then posting three times a day in there, uh, including one or two lives per week, then building relationships with other Facebook groups uh, to get extra people in, uh, and then eventually building offers into your Facebook group. Uh, as for startup founders, um, it's likely that uh, the main technique you would need to use is LinkedIn automation. So you find the exact people uh, who can help you get the word out about your idea or interested in your idea. You and your team, let's say there's five people in your team, all of you set up linked helper software that automatically connect to 100 to 200 people per day at about 30 to 40 will say yes. Um, and then as soon as they say yes, linked helper automatically sends them a message. So um, if you have that across multiple accounts, uh, that would be an easy way of getting early people into what you're doing. So when you mentioned uh, starting a Facebook group, sharing three times a day and having a nice name for this group, when, when you go to name your Facebook group, do you take in consideration uh, the SEO for it? 
Like, do yeah, you? That's, that's basically it. So we were like, if people use the word copy, they know about copywriting, and if they use traffic, they know about web traffic. A friend of mine runs Millennial Entrepreneur Community. That's that's pretty good as well. He he picks up a lot of organic SEO for that. Yeah, I know Arne, Arne Giske. Yeah, yeah, cool. <laughs> fantastic, fantastic. And how about the posting three times a day? Do you have best times a day to post on your on Facebook? Uh, it, it's a bit of a misnomer. This best time of day posting. It's more like if you consistently post, it'll work. Um, I, I mean, for the sake of brevity right now, I, I built a lot of my audience in England now I live here. So I tend to post at 11.30 at night here so that the English people getting up get it and um, the Americans who are up late see it. And then I do 8 a.m. British time, so 8 a.m. LA time, so like late afternoon UK. Then I do midday LA time, so 8 o'clock British time. I, I do those three times, but I don't think it really matters. It matters much more that you can be regular that uh, perhaps you're looking at sites like Reddit to find ideas for content so that you never stuck with, I don't know what to write. Very good, very good. And do you do, uh, say, 80-20 of like only 20% sales, 80% is just fun and content, or, or do you even do a, a less of a sales ratio? It, it's, it's about 80-20, but the way I do it is I never mention what I do or I never mention sales for about, uh, well, in my group for about six weeks, and then I do a launch for about three or four weeks, where I, I talk about it a lot, and then as soon as the launch is over, it, it goes back to pure value, pure fun, pure entertainment. So it, it is 80-20, but um, I, I would rather get a big spike of revenue and then just disappear and go back to the fun stuff. Okay, and if you were to start today from scratch, have a start a Facebook group today, how would you get, the hardest thing is getting those first people to join the group because nobody wants to join an empty group. How do you get those first ones in there? Well, firstly, if you have like 20, 20 to 25 good posts when the group opens, people, it, it won't matter, there's no one in there because most people, like 90% of people just use the Facebook group like almost like an RSS feed and they just read it. It's mm -hmm. really hard to get people to stay active in it. Um, so yeah, so firstly, there's that. If you have those good posts in when you start, it'll get good. So you can start by answering questions in other people's groups um, and friend requesting people and then uh, offering them to join the group. I, I, I meant to say don't add people to groups. I can see why people would say that, but it worked really well for us. Like, it's like, it, it was, um, yeah, it, it was a big part of why we grew so fast. But um, yeah, if you have good content, that's, that's really going to make the difference. As long as you're adding people by email, as long as you're adding people to the group, as long as you're doing share competitions to get people to add their friends into the group, um, everything else is, is, you know, you can add 1% or 2% here and there, but that's the main bits. Yeah, as of, uh, from what I know, as of two weeks ago, Facebook changed the way you can you, when you add people to a group until two weeks ago, they're automatically in the group. Now they give us the option to accept or decline. So it's, because uh, yeah, a lot of people do hate being added to the group because they don't keep track. And the next thing you know, uh, you're receiving posts from the group that you didn't know you were in. And the Bitcoin groups were going crazy for, for the longest time. <laughs> um. Uh, yeah, a hundred percent. But that's why I say it, it's going to get harder next year for Facebook groups. Uh, this is the last year that it's going to be good. Vin, you you talked. Uh, you had one hundred talks or one hundred speeches, and was it forty countries? Uh, yes, it was um, forty-one cities, um, ten countries, uh, all, all Europe and North America. Um, yeah, brilliant, man. I, how I, long? How long did it take you to do this? Um, about a year, a year and a half. There was an Estonian gig, and then, then I went to America, and, and then I started the proper world tour, uh, speaking everywhere. Um, yeah, I, I can't tell you how exciting it is to show up in Montreal. Uh, like I'd never been to Montreal before, and there's hundreds of people there. Like I was just in disbelief and I remember doing a Facebook live 
um, just like, wow, yeah, Montreal, uh, Ottawa was great as well. I spoke of Sass North, that's probably my favorite one of the whole tour. And then I'll just say next, you're Canadian. Those two are really good. Um, yeah, so, so they've been good, like pulling up in Silicon Valley and speaking at a cinema to hundreds of people. So yeah, it, it, was, it was an amazing journey and um, it, it shows the value of being in the scene. Um, and, and this is like to my detriment now, but like I was being invited to so much and then I, I made the, the difficult decision to stop speaking so I could uh, concentrate on my business when I moved to LA and like the number of talks just like declined. So like uh, you, you have, well, when you're hot, you really got to take the most of it. So I, I'll get back to speaking a little bit sometime soon. But um, yeah, so if, if you're in the scene, then things could move really fast. You had one talk in Las Vegas. It was the South by Southwest. And there was, it was very talked about uh, because I guess you, you won as the best speech and there was a lot of other speakers that weren't too happy or something like that. Well, tell us about that. Yeah, so what's strange about that is um, that was uh, free. Um, that was like three months after I started public speaking. Like uh, before that, I'd given two or three talks ever, uh, and they weren't very good. Um, so that that gave me a reason to get good at public speaking. And then uh, yeah, I, I was I I won that versus people who had been speaking years, and they were like, "Who was this punk kid?" But um, like the the talk was uh unreal and uh i i've never given a talk that's made me so much money than that talk um like to this day i still get leads from it it's been 2015 um but yeah that, because the the value of the audience was very high at that and uh yeah so like that that talk really changed my life that's amazing so about the you're in a mission to to speak the truth about many of the lies that marketers uh, marketers tell people mm -hmm. you want to tell us uh, a couple examples of those lies so one of the main one of the main ones is that um a, a lot of people sell courses to people um who are starting their journey and it requires a lot of financial input firstly for the course which can be 10 or twenty thousand dollars and secondly, it's something like uh, Facebook ads, which requires uh, a lot of, it really requires a lot of initial cash for most people starting off. Now, if you, if you have a killer product, like a random Kickstarter product that just happens to do well, yes, you can immediately get an ROI on ads. But for everyone else, it's really hard to get right. And uh, I'll tell you another one, affiliates. It, it, the learning curve to get affiliates to sell your stuff is unreal. If you don't have a massive uh, email list, you can't get in the door. I couldn't even get on the affiliate platforms for Ace the Game right now. So uh, my point is I, I focus on things that anyone can do and will immediately get them traffic and will immediately get them sales. So I'm not saying these other things don't work, but there's a very steep learning curve to them. And of course, Facebook ads are how any company scales. So I, I am a big fan of Facebook ads. For people at the start of their journey, you know, if we're being real here, they just don't work for most people. So the, the sort of things I talk about, community building, creating content um, that sells, uh, anyone can do it, can pick it up, uh, can start with it uh, and start making money quickly. And, and that's the whole idea uh, in Ace the Game. Here's a hundred different growth hacks anyone can use and can do well from. Very good. And would you, would you consider or have you ever exchanged services? Let's say if you need Facebook ads, have you given that person your services in, in exchange? Yeah. So uh, I, I mentor a couple people and we help each other out. So uh, yeah, I'm a big fan of Contra deals. Um, uh, we, we had a Facebook ads person, we sent them leads uh, and they did some of our ads for free. So that worked out really well. Very good. So uh, you all, you wrote, Two books. Do you have another one uh, that's coming out soon, or are you working on it? Uh, I'm just waiting to get famous enough so I can write my life story. <laughs> that's going to be really good. But, um, yeah, I, I mean, people do books like every six months, and for me, that that's that's like not magic or special. So I, I waited exactly two years between my books. I uh, said so it would be a big event um, when my next book came. Um, so. Yeah, so it may be another two years before my next one. 
Um, but uh, until then, possibly I'll start getting involved with Twitch, which seems to be the leading social media net, uh, network right now. So I, I may do something with Twitch next. Uh, I'm still working it out. I, I believe so too. I've seen Gary V is jumping in uh, full board with Twitch. And is it as of right now, Twitch is only for gamers? Pretty much. So the, it, it's starting to branch out and it, it could become like the next podcasting and talk show platform, which I think it will. And uh, I, I'd be amazed if they didn't want to do that, um, where people watch other people do stuff. So I, I think it's heading that way. Uh, Twitch will, will always be mainly gaming. But um, yeah, it's, it's I mean, it, it, until Twitch really came through these past two years, it had been frustrating for me that there hadn't been really a social network that's came through since Instagram eight years ago. Um, like uh, musically is the other one is just, just, just not relevant for 90% of people. So yeah, so I, you know, I'm excited about Twitch because now that I have all these skills, when a new platform comes out, I can destroy it. But I've been waiting a long time for a new platform. <laughs> what is your favorite platform? Yeah, I get asked this a lot. I, I mean, Facebook is still my main platform, but um, I'm, I'm starting to lose favor with it. It's getting very hard to do ads in the internet marketing niche, um, which has just which destroyed the momentum of my book. Um, and uh, and then, yeah, and then, then your listeners are going to say, but I keep seeing ads for internet marketers. Uh, how can Facebook be banning ad accounts if that's the case? And I can tell you how, because I know a guy who does it. They have... 200 or 300 different ad accounts and every time one gets banned they just move the pixel across which means that facebook hates internet marketing so much it puts it in the same banner as boner pills and face cream uh so, so th that's where we are with internet marketing on facebook so yeah facebook's still my main platform um but i may move somewhere else next but it all comes down to can i find a secret source on that platform exactly does the linkedin seem uh, promising to you? Um, it did, um, but uh, I, I mean, I, I got millions of views last year on LinkedIn, and I presume it helped me get sales for all the other things I'm working on. Uh, but BuzzFeed did this article on me and my friend Josh Fetchter, who kind of said we were doing broetry, like a kind of poetry of LinkedIn. And as soon as that came out, LinkedIn cut our reach for both of us, and like probably for him a lot more because LinkedIn wasn't my main platform, but uh, like he wrote a lot of posts on how LinkedIn nerfed him. Uh, so yeah, so we, we were put in the black box after that and that was kind of the end of me on LinkedIn. I, I still post, I, I still get thousands of views each post, but um, yeah, they, they, they brought the hammer down on us for bringing the platform into disrepute. I, I heard about that. So you went from, you started to get about 10% of the engagement that you were getting previously, is I that think, right? Uh, I think I went from 50,000 views per post to 5,000. Yeah, so it is about 10%, that's yeah. crazy. Yeah, so besides Twitch, anything else you, you see that it has the potential to be the next big thing? Right. In terms of social media networks, that's the one, and it kind of feels lame to say, but Instagram is, Instagram is where the future is in terms of culture, and in terms of B2C, it's all Instagram. It, it hardly sounds like a secret source because it's no secret to anyone, but it's just growing and growing and uh, the results people get from it uh, are still growing. Um, and the influencer thing is not going anywhere either. So yeah, Instagram and YouTube, I, I believe they're likely where I'll go to next. And, and pretty soon, uh, probably next year, it, it wouldn't be, I guess, as easy to start a Facebook group. How about these Facebook pages? Do you see anything interesting on having a Facebook page? No, no Facebook pages are 100% pay to play. If you have a big budget or if you work for a big company, yeah, 100%, it, it's, it's a great place to be. But for entrepreneurs starting out, no. Nah, those days ended in 2010. Yeah. About uh, reading books, what is one that has the most or the biggest effect on you? Uh, the 48 Laws of Power. Um, easily the most influential book I ever read. I read that when I was on welfare and it prepared me for uh, having, you know, meetings with big business people. 
Uh, so uh, conceal your intentions, say less, act like a king to be treated like one. The, these things served me really well when I had to go and raise hundreds of thousands of dollars and I, I was sitting there and I was making 71 pound a week when I was having those discussions. 71 pound a week, that's about 100 US dollars a week? Yeah. <laughs> Well, um, I'm glad those days are way gone for you and way past that. Vin, what is one word of advice that you would want uh, everybody to know? Sacrifice. You said one word. So oh. <laughs> no, one, one advice. Sorry. Right. One yeah, advice. well, um, yeah, like um, you, you're going to need to sacrifice a lot of things. Sacrifice spending time with your family or loved ones. Sacrifice your love for alcohol um, and uh, crappy foods. Um, sacrifice uh, a lot of the comforts that you know uh, you, you believe you have to have. Like uh, that, that's what it is, really, and that's the difference. And another thing: don't listen to anyone who ever says you don't need to work twelve to sixteen hours a day. I mean, them people—they're never the ones who made it who say that. Just, just bear that in mind. Uh, every successful person, Elon Musk, Bill Gates, will, will tell you the same. It is going to be a ton of work. Uh, so if, if you want it to the life-changing level, that, that is what it takes. And it, it will have an effect on your health, as I've seen this, this past year since I moved to America and the levels got so much higher. Um, that's something you've got to be ready for. Yeah, I agree 100%. I hear so many people saying that uh, of course the work smarter versus work harder is also true but you still have to work and and work hard the harder you work the quicker you get to where you want to go yeah all right vin for the people that are listening to us if they want to get a hold of you and reach you work with you where do they go and where do they find you so vin clancy on facebook instagram youtube um, acethegame.com is my new book uh, so if, if they want the growth hacks to grow their business that's where they should go but yeah Vin Clancy uh, I'm everywhere find me on there and uh, your book Ace the Game is available on Amazon uh, not yet we, again because of profit margins we want to keep it all in house okay it, it might be at some point but uh, you get the EPUB and so on when you buy it very good. I'll put the link to, to the book on the show notes for everybody that wants to see. Awesome. Okay. Vin, thank you so much for being on the show. I really appreciate this and I'm going to hear it over and over uh, just to make sure I get it all. All right. Awesome. Thank you. Have a great day. Bye. Bye.